everyone. This is Ashley. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm thrilled to be here for Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to be sharing some inspiration today using the newest Lucky to Know You release. And the first stamp set I'm going to feature is this adorable 6x8 set called Bunny Butt Peekaboo. I'll also be doing some watercoloring, so I'm going to pull out this brand new Artist Watercolor Palette set from Altenew. I love the formula of these pan watercolors. They're really creamy and very easy to use. I'm going to start out with a piece of watercolor paper or watercolor cardstock cut to an A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I will end up cutting this bunny out, but I wasn't quite sure which way I was going, so I wanted to make sure that I lined him up just in case I wanted to use this as my card front. I'm inking up my the front end of my bunny in Obsidian Pigment Ink, which is also by Altenew. I'm going to do this twice just to make sure I get a really nice, crisp line for my watercoloring. There he is, all super cute and ready to watercolor. So now I'm going to spray my pan watercolors with some water from my Distress Sprayer. This just helps to activate them and make it a little bit easier to pick up some of this pigment. I'm going to take a damp brush and I'll be using Rock Collection for the light gray color of the bunny. Now this is a pretty dark gray, so I'm going to dilute it a lot with water. And because I like it a little bit on the warmer side, I'm going to also add some of that pure white pigment in there as well. Because I use pigment ink to stamp my bunny image, I'm going to take my heat gun and just run it over the image a couple times. Pigment ink takes a little bit longer to dry than dye ink does, and I just wanna be sure that it's nice and dry before I apply any water, just to avoid any black streaks from the ink. I've decided to use a wet on wet technique for watercoloring this bunny in because it just gives it a little bit of a softer look and I wanted to give the effect of soft or fluffy to the image. So I'm just making sure to take some clean water on my brush and spreading it around the area that I will be watercoloring to. Now I want to break this up into sections. If I put the clean water all over the bunny on his ears, on his paws, and then on his face. I probably wouldn't get to each area while it was still wet. So I just want to work in sections. So first I'm going to be watercoloring his face, this very, very light gray shade. This is going to be the base shade for my bunny. I'm going to build up the shadows a little bit with this same watercolor color that I've created here in this little pan. But because I'll be layering the color on top of itself, it will appear to be darker in these sections that I'm trying to create shadow and depth and dimension. I've spread this up here so that you can see it all come together. I want you to notice how in between the two layers, so my base layer and the second layer, which will add the shadows and dimension to the image, in between those two layers, I dry the entire image with my heat gun. Using my heat gun just helps speed up the process. You could absolutely just leave it to dry, to air dry, um, but I want it completely dry before I add that second layer because anytime you're adding watercolor to wet cardstock, the watercolor is going to move about where the water on the cardstock is. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to be more localized to these spots that I want the shadows to appear. And I'm going to place these shadows anywhere on the bunny that I think light would be obstructed. So up where his feet are meeting his face, also all along the bottom of his face, I'm going to continue it up pretty much around the entire uh, part of his head just to give it a little bit more dimension there. The base of his ears, up by his nose, and then in between his cute little toes as well. While I'm creating these shadows, I'm also being mindful that I need them to blend in to the rest of the rabbit as well. So as I'm creating the darker lines and shadows, I will then dip my brush into some clean water and wipe away some excess and then just do a quick fanning motion over the transition line between the darker shade and the lighter shade, and this will create a nice blend. If you're familiar with no line watercoloring, it's a very similar sort of technique, um, but it's very simple. So once you do your darker line, if you want to blend it in, you'll just dip your brush in some clean water, dip off or tap off some of the excess, and then again, do a sweep 
and a fanning motion in between the transition lines and that will just sort of blend the two colors in together it also always looks better when it's dry so before you freak out and start your uh, project over let the project dry and take a look at it after walking away for a minute just so you can sort of get the entire picture all together so here we have our cute bunny. He is nearly done with the watercoloring portion. I'm just going to need to get in there in the inner part of his ears. And then I'm also going to create some rosy cheeks for him with the same color. So I've created this sort of Pepto-Bismol color with the uh, cherry blossoms shade from the same watercolor pan set. And I've diluted it again with lots of water and then some white as well. And I'm again creating that same base light color and then I will go in and make sure it's dry before adding my second layer which is going to again serve as the dimension and shadows for the inside of the ears. I'm also creating some rosy happy cheeks. That's a thing, right? Happy cheeks um, with the same color but I will again really dilute that. I don't want a very bright color. I just want it to look rosy and like he's been smiling, happy cheeks. So I'm going to go in with that same color and then I will bring some clean water into that area around his cheeks as well. And you'll see that in just a second. Oftentimes when I am coloring in an image, whether I'm watercoloring or Copic coloring or coloring with colored pencils, I will actually look up an image of whatever I'm coloring just to try to get the right spots where the shadows land because it's not always easy just to sort of make it up when there's not an actual subject in front of you and you can see where the shadow is. It can be hard to create a three-dimensional image. So I always find it super helpful to look up an actual picture of whatever Whatever the subject is that I'm coloring. This next portion I'm using colored pencils to create a little bit more of that shadow because I just didn't feel like it was popping out enough but also because it creates really great texture especially when you're coloring on watercolor paper with colored pencils and I wanted that textured look and I wanted it to feel or seem like it was fuzzy or textured and colored pencils is the easiest way that I know to do that. It's also a great trick just to use colored pencils to soften some of those transition lines when you're watercoloring. Something I use very often when I feel like I haven't done a well enough job blending, I will bring in some of uh, some very like colors of colored pencils and then just soften those transition lines and it helps it blend a little bit more. So for the colors I chose for my Prismacolor colored pencils, I believe the gray was 20% French gray, and then I also used a white colored pencil to sort of drag that color out into the rest of the bunny just to make sure that it blended well with that very light, almost white color of the bunny. And just for continuity, I used this color and technique everywhere where I created the shadows when I was watercoloring. And for the ears, I used the same type of technique with the colors pink and blush pink. Now it's time to assemble my card. I ended up cutting out the bunny image and I've also used some Easter egg images that are included in the bunny butt peekaboo set along with a cross image from the clean line faith sentiment set also from this release. For my sentiment, I'm using Wishing You a Blessed, which is also in the Bunny Butt Peekaboo set, and it's sort of like one of those old school label sentiments that I love, and I also love the fact that the bunny is sort of like peeking over that sentiment, and it's perfect. I'm using a tried and true Jennifer McGuire tip to use press and seal just to keep all of my cut images together after I've assembled them and have them exactly where I want them. I don't want them moving around. So I'm using the press and seal to keep them together. I am then going to put some foam tape on the back of all of the cut pieces, which I guess I skipped over. Um, but then I'm able just to hold the press and seal over the card and just put some pressure there onto it so that all of the pieces are adhered to the card front. As I'm pulling the press and seal off, you'll see that it actually took one of the eggs with it and it just wasn't actually adhered with foam tape. So no worries. I just put a little bit of glue on there and was able to stick it back in. 
I'm adding the Easter word to my sentiment to create wishing you a blessed Easter. And this Easter word is included in the Clean Line Faith stamp set as well. I'm going to line this up in my Misty and just to make sure I don't get any of any markings or any ink on my image, I'm just going to put a piece of copy paper over my bunny scene image and that will prevent it from getting any marks on it. I went ahead and put some foam tape on the back of my card front. This will help it pop up and give it a little bit of dimension. And then I add it to an A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I opted for a pink card base. I just thought that it looked very springy. Usually I'm one to use white card bases and a lot of white space, but I thought that this looked really great all together. You can see I added a little bit of a watercolor wash there onto my card front. Nothing crazy. I actually ended up just using the paint water just to add a little bit of color and I just think it also gives a little bit more of a watercolor look when there's just a slight wash there behind the scene. My next card is a very quick one, but I couldn't do just one because everything in this release is my new favorite. So I'm using the daffodil stem die and I'm going to be die cutting this out of three different pieces of cardstock. I'll be using the white cardstock for my outline. The green cardstock will actually be sort of like puzzle pieces to go inside the leaves. And then the yellow cardstock will be the little puzzle pieces that fit into the petals. And this will create that color. I could have just used the cardstock as is and left it with for the flat color, but you'll see in a little bit, I actually did go in with some Copic colors just to add some more colors and blending and a little bit more interest there into the actual pieces of the flower. For my sentiment, I'm using Just Because Word Mix 2. This is a new set from this release, and you can see there are two stamps within this six by eight stamp set, and each of them have a plethora of different sort of shapes and different orientations of sentiments. This can be used in so many different ways. It can be used as a background stamp. You could also stamp it and then just cut out all of the different sentiments, but I'm going to use it just to stamp this one lucky to know you sentiment on the bottom left hand corner and I can use my misty to sort of manipulate where I want the stamp to be and then just ink up that one sentiment that I like. The sentiments are far enough away from each other where you can do that with a full size ink pad or a mini ink pad depending on which sentiment you choose. I have ink blended some Audrey Blue from Simon Says Stamp onto the right side of that cardstock. And this is going to offer just a nice background to this flower once I go ahead and adhere it on. And to make sure that all of these die cut pieces can go together since they are all separate, I'll be gluing them onto a piece of Hero Arts acetate sheets. These come 20 sheets in a pack and they're five by six, which is a great size. I'm able again, just to add all of these little pieces in here. And then I will just take some scissors and fussy cut as close to the line as possible. I'm then able to use foam tape on the back end and then adhere it to my cardstock. Because I wanted the flower to come up most of the way on the card front and start at the very bottom of the card front, I needed to elongate the flower a bit. So to do that, I just die cut it all again and then use the bottom half with just that extra leaf there to give it a little bit more length. Thank you so much again for joining me today. I hope that you've gotten some inspiration for the newest Simon Says Stamp release. I'd love to know what your favorite set is and what you're most excited about. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.